Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm so happy to be back with another video for Spellbinders. And today I'm going to be using Bird on Cherry Branch as well as the Botanical Dragonfly and these, those tiny little flowers from the Tiny Shadow Box die set. If you tuned into my last video, you'll notice that I used some of those same flowers as well. I really think that these tiny little dies like this add a lot of dimension and char character to a finished project. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to be doing some ink blending, so I do have a piece of Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock. This is cut at four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You could use any kind of paper you like, but I really like how Distress inks blend over the top of the watercolor cardstock. So that's why I chose that. Also, I'm going to be doing some paint splattering and I wasn't sure how much I wanted to do, so I wanted something that was gonna hold up to a little bit of water. I have some tumbled glass as well is my mini blending tool and I'm just lightly blending this on the card panel but I'm starting at the top right and I'm working my way towards the bottom left hand side of the panel. I'm starting with tumble glass because I'm just using this to kind of map out where I want my ink blending to go. You could definitely go in with your darkest and work out to your lightest but this always seems safer to me and then I don't over ink my uh, my panel. Now I have stormy sky and I'm just pretty much just getting this on there. I'm going to build this up pretty dark, as dark as I can pretty much get it with this particular color. Because at this point I'm kind of trying to decide if I'm going to cut this down to a smaller note card size or if I'm going to use the whole entire panel. So I'm just making sure that I work that on there and I give myself enough ink blending that if I do decide to cut it down, that I'm not cutting off everything I had already done. Then I'm gonna go back to the tumbled glass and I'm gonna work that in some more as well. And I'm kind of blending out some of that stormy sky. You can see where I had some tool marks on there and that's primarily because I hardly ever use the stormy sky. That was pretty much a new blending foam. So it is gonna be kind of streaky, but that tumble glass really works that out of there. Both of my card panels were ink blended exactly the same. So I am going to take two slightly different approaches on both of these, but overall they're not going to be terribly different. So now I have the linen background stamp by my, my favorite things and I'm inking that up with that stormy sky. Now this is going to seem really dark on that white upper right hand corner, but it's going to blend in a little bit on that lower left hand corner where we have all that stormy sky built up. That's that's fine. If you wanted that to taper off up on the white, you would just take a baby wipe and kind of blot that up. So when you put your card panel over the top of the stamp, it would kind of blend out a little bit and it wouldn't be so dark. I didn't do that because I didn't mind all of that dark on there. I liked the texture. And now I'm going to be adding some Gonze Tombi Starry Colors watercolors. These are a water-based pigment paint. They are kind of a they kind of have a shimmer to them. I'm going to be using the Champagne Gold, and this is pretty light. You could definitely go with something like maybe the yellow gold and splatter that on there. That would probably show up a little bit better. But I was a little nervous gotta be honest. So I was just being a little cautious and I went with a little bit lighter gold. I did spray some water into that well and I let it set for a minute or two so that paint would soften up. Now I'm just taking my paintbrush and I'm essentially just tapping it inside that well and I'm letting my paintbrush soak up all of that paint and then I'm splattering it across the top of my panel. Now you probably notice that I have my panel tilted at an angle. I did that on purpose because that's the direction I want the paint to go. And then also I hold my paintbrush straight so it doesn't splatter all over the place where I don't want it. Now I'm taking a scrap piece of paper of Nina Solar White cardstock, and I'm gonna do some ink blending on this as well. This is uh, the Distress Peeled Paint, and I'm just uh, ink blending this on there. You could use colored cardstock if you wanted, but I wanted more of the textured look of the ink blending on the cardstock. So now I'm taking my ball stylus and my uh, Spellbinders embossing mat, and I'm just pushing down the centers of those flowers so the 
uh, so they pop up so I can add some more dimension to them. And then I'm also going to take my Tim Holtz craft pick and I'm going to curl the uh, ends of each of those larger flowers. So when they go onto my card panel, they kind of curl down a little bit. It just adds a little bit more character and dimension to the finished card. I'm not going to do that with the little flower that's going to sit on top of those though. I want those to kind of curl up a little bit. Now I'm taking some dimensional foam tape and I'm going to put a piece, a, just a small piece on each one of those larger flowers. And then I'm going to put the smaller flower on top of that so it looks like a dimensional flower. And then I'm going to set those off to the side for a little bit. So now I'm gonna work on my dragonflies and I have two complete sets cut out here. I cut these out of Simon Says Stamp cream cardstock and you have to cut each of the wings twice. So, and then flip one of each over so that they mirror each other. And you could skip this next part if you'd like to, but I really wanted to add a little bit more detail to each of my dragonflies. So I'm taking all of my pieces to the botanical dragonfly and I'm going to ink them up with my Versamark ink pad. I'm simply just setting them on top there and pushing them into the pad. This is kind of messy, just so you know. You could probably put some temporary adhesive on a scrap piece of paper and attach those so you don't have to get your fingers all inky and with powder on them, but I decided to do it this way instead. I am using Hero Arts Satin Pearl Embossing Powder and I'm using this one because I wanted to add a little bit of uh a little bit of shine to each of the elements of this dragonfly and the satin pearl still allows that uh, Simon's Stamp Cream cardstock to, to show through once it's heat embossed. Now I'm adding some 3M foam tape to the body of my dragonfly and I'm going to do both of these exactly the same. I want to build up the dimension on these. You could absolutely just adhere them to the front of your card panel uh, flat with some liquid adhesive or whatever adhesive of you'd like. However, I think the dimension just really shows off the beauty of these dies. So I have one layer of foam tape on there. I'm putting the uh, both the top and the bottom wings on there. And I want the bottom wings to kind of tuck up underneath those top wings, but I don't want them, I don't want them to be completely hidden by the top wings, if that makes any sense. I am putting some double-sided adhesive on that so I can overlap those. And then I'm going to be adding some more uh, 3M foam tape to this because not only do I want the dragonfly itself to be dimensional, but I also want it to be dimensional from the card panel. So it's Essentially, it kind of pops up into three different layers, and I'm making sure that I add that foam tape back behind the dragonfly's wings so it doesn't get crushed in the mail. And then I, I had a little bit of adhesive on my card panel, and I thought I'd just rub it off, and I ended up tearing my card panel, but that's okay because I'm going to cover it up with the dragonfly's wings anyway. So I did end up cutting down both of these card panels to three and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches because I decided to turn these into little note cards. I like to have note cards on hand and these are perfect for that. You could definitely leave these as full size cards and probably add um, probably add some more flowers to them, probably add a sentiment to it as well, but I liked the, the smaller size of them. And then because I didn't like how those flowers turned out with just the dried marigold on them, I'm gonna take my Copic markers and I'm going to add some more shadow and a little bit more dimension to them. Now I already have them put together. You could definitely cut out more of these in just white cardstock and color these in, but I decided since I already had these done, I can make this work for me. I'm taking the YG, or I'm sorry, the YR18 for my darkest shadow color. Then I'm going to blend that out just a wee bit with the YR14. And then I'm going to finish blending that out again with the YR12. So you're not going to see any of that dried marigold on there, and that's okay. I really wanted these to pop next to that blue in the stormy sky and the tumble glass, and that definitely does the trick. 
Now I do have these adhered on or not quite adhered onto the dragonfly. I just have the, that flower sitting there for the time being and I'm going to make a bow. I have a very long piece of May Arts hemp twine and I have it folded over onto itself three times so I have three strands. Now I'm tying that into a regular bow and I'm just going to pull those down. I don't want all of my loops to be uh, the same so I'm just kind of pulling on each uh, tail there until I get it where I want it and then I'm going to pull it tight. This is going to be tucked up underneath that flower and I just want to make sure that it is not too big before I adhere anything. Once I'm happy with that, I can start cutting off those tails and making those a little bit shorter because I don't want those sticking off my card uh, base too far once everything is complete. Now for this card panel, I just simply skipped the linen background stamp. Everything else is the same. I did the same paint splatters with the Gonzai Tombi starry colors. Uh, I did the same ink blending. It's also cut down to the same dimensions. I just simply skipped that background stamp. Now I'm taking some more uh, dimensional foam tape and I am I put it next to that uh, the body of that dragonfly and I'm going to put my flower down here now I suggest that when you do this you kind of set it off at an angle because things will kind of tuck in a little bit better I forgot to do that so I do end up struggling with this just a wee bit but that's okay it's totally fixable from here on out I'm tucking in some of the leaves from the bird on cherry bird on cherry branch die set that I had die cut using that uh, peeled paint distress inking that I had done earlier. And then these little uh, leaves here that I'm tucking in right now, these are from the floral panel card die set. I just simply cut these out with some green cardstock. I hadn't shown any of that to you earlier because I decided at the last minute to do that. I'm using Nuvo uh, liquid adhesive to tuck these in there. Once it dries, everything should stick in there just fine and it shouldn't go anywhere. After I get everything where I want it, as far as my greenery and my flower, I'm going to get uh, a bunch of glue on this bow and I'm gonna tuck that up underneath that flower. I do the same thing on the other card. I just actually didn't make that bow quite as bulky as I did this one. I think both of them are just fine. So now I'm adding some half inch eye craft double sided adhesive to some fun foam so I can put this back on the back side of my card panel. Again, you could probably skip this. You could probably just attach the card panel to your card base and call it a day. But I figured since I was already adding all of this dimension, I might as well add just a little bit more to help finish this off. Now I'm going to pull this off and attach it to the back side of this. And before I am doing making sure sure I do this before I add any more embellishments to my card because I hadn't quite decided if I was going to use any uh, any liquid embellishment or if I was going to use any gemstones or anything like that. This is more Simon Says Stamp a cream cardstock and I have this cut down to four by eight inches and I have it squared at four inches so my overall dimensions of my note card is four by four inches. I think this is the perfect size for note cards so I do this frequently. Now I'm going to be taking some Hero Arts gems and you, if you look at the wings on the dragonfly, you can see that there's kind of a, a flower shapes in them. Of course, this is from the Flower Garden collection. So I'm putting the gems inside those little flower shapes there. I'm making sure that I add the bigger ones to the bigger flower. And then on the bottom of the dragonfly wings there on the top, they're a little bit smaller. So I am adding smaller ones to that. Again, you could use whatever embellishment you would like to use, but I really liked how these gems stuck out once they were they were on the, the wings. I think they finished it off nicely. I did end up losing one of the, a little bit of the sticky on that little one there, so I took some more adhesive and just simply attached that to the wing and called it a day. I'm also going to add these to those bottom wings as well. And then you could add more embellishments to the front of your card panel if you would like. I just really felt like it didn't need anything else to it. I liked the simplicity of this, but feel free to add whatever you would like, folks. Okay, so I finished off my other card exactly the same, and then I called it a day on both of them.
Now you could do this layout and all sorts of different types of color schemes and they would look super duper. Also that dragonfly, the botanical dragonfly, man, I could totally see this in gold cardstock or vellum or even that green cardstock that I used to cut out those little leaves from the floral panel uh, card die set. You could do that on maybe a wood background with some creams. That would be beautiful. And I think my other favorite in the flower garden collection folks are all these little flowers that you can find in several different uh, die sets in this collection. They're so much fun and they make the perfect accent on so many different types of projects. All right, we are done. We are good to go. I truly hope you enjoyed my cards today. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.